Did you know that the font used for the interior part for a children's book often matters a lot more than it does for other genres? If you're looking for a creative way to make your beautiful children's book look even more fun and exciting, then this video is for you. Hi there, I'm Evie, an award-winning children's author and ghostwriter over on eviejones.com and the creator of Children's Book University. I create videos specifically for children's authors, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss my weekly videos. This video is all about fonts and how the way we are using fonts can really enhance our children's book. So in this video, I'll talk about first the two main places we as authors are using fonts and how this is especially important to us children's authors. Second, the three main rules we want to pay attention to and follow when it comes to using fonts. Third, seven wonderfully creative ways we can use fonts. So definitely give at least one of these a try. And lastly, at the very end, I'll share with you the two places I love to get my own fonts from. And I have created a sort of cheat sheet that includes my favorite fonts as well as the links where you can get them. So let's dive right into it by looking at the two main places we as authors are using fonts and how this is especially important to us children's authors. Every book uses fonts on their cover for things like the title, subtitle, and author name. And every book uses a font for the inside of their books, so for the telling of the story itself. This in turn means that every author has to make a decision on what fonts to use for their book. Now, I have made a separate video on the importance of fonts on a cover for children's books. So if you haven't seen that one yet, I will make sure to add the link to the description below. In it, I talk about the font sizing on the cover, the placement on the cover, as well as what to look out for and pay attention to when it comes to the book cover of your children's book. So be sure not to miss that. But when it comes to fonts for a children's book, authors are often faced with this extra challenge because the font used for the interior part of a children's book often matters a lot more than it does for regular books. And that's because we will want to use fonts to express or bring across a certain feel, whether that pertains to things like a certain mood, a certain age group this book is written for, or a certain look. What I have found over the years is that many aspiring children's authors are a bit unsure about what they can and cannot do inside their books. And because of that, they tend to stay more on the safe side of things where they opt to just stick to the normal way of presenting text. And that often keeps them away from experimenting and being a bit more bold with the interior design of their books. So I always love to remind fellow children's authors that their books are for kids. So it's okay to make the text side of things a bit more exciting. But before we get into the design or look of fonts, we need to take a look at the three main rules we want to pay attention to and follow when it comes to using fonts. Rule number one is that we will want to be aware of a font's licensing. Many authors actually don't know this, but each font creator sets the licensing agreement for each of their fonts. These licensing agreements let users know what each font can and cannot be used for. For example, just because we are free to use a font in, let's say, a Word document, which we are using for personal use only, does not necessarily mean we also have the right to use that font for the printing in books. So we as authors essentially have two main options. Option one is to purchase a font to be able to use it for our books. Or option two is to use a free font that falls under the open font license agreement. Unless your book is being traditionally published or unless you are really set on a particular font, you're probably looking to use a free font. And so we will want to make sure it falls under the already mentioned open font license because these fonts usually fall under a common license, which enables us to use the font for free for personal use as well as commercial use, be it print or digital. So whenever you wish to use a font, make sure to check its license first. If you're using a font marketplace, then those will list the type of license agreement for each font. Otherwise, you can also simply Google the specific font name and find out its license agreement that way. And like I said before, I'll also share my favorite fonts with you at the end of this video, all of which fall under the open font license. 
Rule number two is to make sure you're choosing a font that is really easy to read. For example, calligraphy-based fonts always look very beautiful and may work well for cards or invitations, but they usually aren't the best choice for children's books, and that's because they are usually much harder to read, which isn't ideal for children's books. So always look at the readability of the fonts you are using. And rule number three is that while we want to select fun fonts, we don't want to go overboard, meaning you should choose and stick to just about two main fonts. So once selected, be sure to stay consistent and use your chosen fonts throughout your entire book. Now, children's books have so many more options when it comes to how fonts can be used inside a book. So let's look at seven fun and creative ways we as authors can use to really spruce up each page to make them even more exciting and appealing to little ones. Number one of using fonts in a fun and creative way is to make some of our text bold and extra big for emphasis. My Super Me I co-authored with Wall Street Journal bestselling author Todd Herman is a beautiful example. I love using fonts like this, not just because it's visually a lot more fun, but also because it hints toward how the reader might want to read this particular section of your book, especially when the text is being read out loud to younger kids. Number two of using fonts in a fun and creative way in our children's book is to use its size to imply the volume with which something is being said and therefore with what volume it is meant to be read. One of my favorite examples for this is in the book Mr. Brown Can Move, Can You? by Dr. Seuss. On the Whisper Whisper page we see the words printed extra small while on the horn page we see the words printed extra big. If I were to imagine these pages with just a regular font and with all the words using the same font size and all just presented on a horizontal plane it wouldn't be as much fun to read nor would it be as much fun to look at. Number three of using fonts in a fun and creative way is to make your font bigger or just different from the other text in order to indicate fun sound words. Here one of the best examples is from the Little Blue Truck series by Elise Shirtley, which uses this technique with pretty much every single sound word in all the books of the series. Which also brings me to number four of using fonts in a fun and creative way, where we can use a different color to indicate each of the different characters talking. This again is used in the little blue truck where each animal gets assigned a different color for the sounds they are making. And if you look throughout the series, you'll find that the color that is being used for sounds the little blue truck is making is usually blue. Number five of using fonts in a fun and creative way is to use a different font altogether. So besides changing the color and size of the font, we could also use a completely different font to distinguish between the different characters. Here, my robot bot is a great example where the font used for the boy is just a bold font, while the font used for the robot looks more mechanical, which might even encourage the reader to read it with a more robotic tone or voice, which in turn just makes it a lot more fun than what it would have been with just a regular font. Number six of using fonts in a fun and creative way is especially great for books that are for slightly older kids like middle grade chapter books as well as graphic novels. And that's the imitation of handwriting. The Diary of a Wimpy Kid by Jeff Keeney is a great example of this. Here, the use of this particular font is meant to promote the feeling of reading the actual journal entries of this kid. So the majority of the book uses this handwritten font. Another great example here is the book The Case of the Starry Night, a book of the Amulet of Amster series, which is all about adventures around famous pieces of art. And here a handwritten font is used to showcase a snippet of a little note. Here the author could have just said that the note read XYZ, right? But instead we see an actual handwritten note, which again makes the story a bit more fun and exciting to read. And number seven, my final example of using fonts in a fun and creative way is one I wanted to add here to kind of provide you with a less daring option. I've worked with so many students and clients over the years within Children's Book University that I've come to see that many of us often shy away from using fonts in a more unique way. So if you are one of them, if you feel like using a different color or, or changing up the font sizes or using different fonts altogether would be a bit too much for you, perhaps display 
playing your otherwise regular font in an angled way would be a wonderful option for you. And a great example of this would be the book Smash Mash Crash by Barbara Odanaka. Throughout the book, we see the text displayed in all sorts of different angles to make the story and its pages even more fun and exciting to read. And of course, we can mix and match these seven font display options I've just shared with you. Perhaps you choose some of your words to be bigger, in a different color, displayed at a different angle and with a different font all at the same time. Hopefully these book examples I've shared with you already gave you some great ideas. But what I personally love doing is to pay attention to how the text is being displayed in my favorite children's books. Those are always the best places for your own inspiration. Now at the beginning I mentioned I would share two places with you from which I love to get my fonts from. There are actually a number of great font marketplaces such as dafonts.com, fonts.com, fontbundles.net, frontscroll.com and so many more. I love using them to find fonts for my own personal use but when it comes to fonts I can use for my books I usually don't use these sites and that's because I don't want to have to sift through all of them to find those I can use for free with an open font license that I mentioned earlier that would allow me to use the font for commercial things such as a book. For that, I love looking at two places, but before I share them with you, I want to remind you to always exercise due diligence to make sure yourself that whatever font you find on these sites does indeed fall under the open font license agreement. Okay, that being said, number one is canva.com. Canva has a huge selection of fonts, whether you're using their free plan or upgrade to their pro plan. Canva is always such a gold mine when it comes to finding fonts we can use for our children's book. And number two, is Google Fonts, which also has a great number of options to choose from. I'll be sure to link to these two options below so you can take a look yourself. But as already mentioned, I have also put together a sort of cheat sheet that includes my favorite fonts from these two sources, as well as each font's direct link where you can get it and download it. With more than 50 children's books that I have written and ghost created, I just love having such a cheat sheet on hand that always shows me my pre-selected options. So if you'd like that cheat sheet as well, you can find the link to it in the description below. I hope you found this video really helpful and that it gives you some wonderful ideas on how you can use your chosen fonts in a fun and creative way in your beautiful children's book. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't yet. It really encourages me to keep making videos for you just like this one. Here's to your colorful and creative text within your children's book. Bye.